Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining our Zoom class. My name is Mary Kay Jolly. I'd like to welcome my students and anyone who's watching on YouTube. Today, mm -hmm. we're going to be painting naked ladies. <laughs> the, I'm going to ask you to make a decision in, a, in, a, in about a minute. I'm going to ask you if you want to use PBO or if you want to paint negative just around them. So that would be a big decision, and, and I can do it either way, whatever you guys decide. I'm going to switch over now to, <laughs> can you hear my nervous in my voice? <laughs> I'm going to switch over to my palette here. Those are nice. So that one on top is my one that's in the show. Let me show you what it looks like. It's mounted on a six inch by six inch piece of man-made board. And I painted the sides and the back black. And then I glued it down with Yes Glue. So this is the one that's in the show. And that's, this Eleanor bought this. She gave me some advice. And then I finished it up and then she bought it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this was before the fires. It was the Saturday before the lightning storm. I played tennis in Pescadero. And then on the way back, I stopped and set my stool up right where this is and painted sitting down. This isn't the one I painted, but, or you know what, it might be. And then I went back in after Eleanor's advice. Uh, this is one that I painted this morning quickly. This one I did not use PDO. I just drew it, I traced it actually, and then just painted around the edges. And this one, this one I sketched when I was out there in Pescadero Beach, but it, it didn't get any farther than that. And this one has got the PBO on it already, and that one's got PBO on it. So now you guys need to tell me what you want to do if you want to use PBO or paint negative. Negative. Yeah, let's do negative. That'd be good. Okay. Great. Great. All right, um, those two have PD on it, so we'll just put those to the side. This is my last piece of six inch by six inch paper. I'm gonna switch formats after today. This is a picture that I took when I was sitting on the stool painting. I, I like it because you have some flowers in the foreground that are big, and then there's a, a mid-ground here that has little flowers. They poke up into the ocean, and then you have that rock out there, Pescadero Beach, and then the ocean and all of that. So what I'm going to do is tape it down on, on, you know what, you know what, I don't think I do that one up there. I'm pretty sure I traced it from this one because I can see now and I remember doing something. What I did first was I moved this little clump of flowers over. See this little clump of flowers right here? It's on the far right side of this picture. But what I did when I traced it was I moved it over about a half an inch there. So that's where I'm going to start. I'm using water-soluble graphite paper. You guys can see the whole thing. And I'm using my... That sound was my pencil sharpener. So the first thing I'm going to do is trace this group of flowers here. Maybe this whole, the whole, yeah, the whole first set. So here I go. Okay, thanks, Claire. This is going to be 
little bit. These flowers are so uh, kind of jumbled. Got this old piece of paper, so I want to make sure it's showing up, which it is. I meant to Google these real fast. I remember, um, Doris, when I painted them at the church, I had Googled them. And the one thing I can kind of remember is that they're the only true amaryllis. Mm. Mm. And the amaryllis that you buy at Christmas time is not a true amaryllis. Mm. So this comes up. I mean, basically something that comes, that stays in its tuber form and then blooms with just a naked stem and then dies off, and then the le and then the leaves come out. So I happened to um, see some yesterday, and I can send you some more pictures. I stopped and took some pictures. They shock me every year. I've lived here for twenty years. The naked ladies come up, and I'm like, "Oh my God! Look at those flowers! They just showed up out of nowhere." <laughs> They always surprise me. I didn't think you guys were going to pick this one. I probably would have had this drawn out already. You're surprising me. I'm, I'm happy that you're doing it with negatives. One of the things that I've talked about, I think even last time, I talked about a cruciform or anytime you have something that crisscrosses in your picture, it's a very strong form. And we're going to get away with it with all of these stems crisscrossing. Not all of them, but a few of them. And if you make them sort of, you know, you don't want to make them like X's. You want to make them sort of... Um, um, I'm thinking the word acute, but that's not the word. Who, who's a good mathematician? Is it obtuse? No, when the angle is very narrow. That's acute, I think. Okay. Now, what I, after I did the whole first, the foreground, see that layer that I just did, the foreground is right there. I wanted to move it over because I want those flowers right there, because these are your four good spots for focal points. Now what I'm going to do is move this picture back over mm. so that this focal point now is in its good spot. And I'm going to try and get the ocean to be flat because my picture's cut crooked. So now I'm going to put in these in the mid-ground. And I'm going around and I'll be painting blue and brown around these guys. I love the stems in here. These, this is still mid-ground, but these are about half the size. Or no, they're smaller than half, but. So the flowers in the front are the biggest. And the ones in the middle are smaller, and the ones way back are the smallest. And that's a type of perspective when things close to you are bigger than the things far away. And I know that just seems really obvious to you, and it, but it's always good just to think about what you're doing. So there, we have less detail back here. We have just, we can't really see each stem we can't really see each petal so we're just gonna paint it paint it like we see it here's here's a group of little ones i think these end up looking good they're sort of all pointing the same way they're sort of pointing to the left 
Have you noticed that when you see a group of them that they all sort of point the same way? Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's... Okay. Oh no, what happened? Ah, look at the mistake I just made. Wrong side. You did the wrong side. <laughs> oh no. All right. Well, you know what? We've all done it. We're not going to let that upset us. No. <laughs> <laughs> we're living during COVID. Drawing with my graphite paper upside down is not going <laughs> to upset me. I got to redo all these mid ones here now. You guys, I should have had this done already. Yeah, I'm boring you because I did it twice. No, it's just giving us time to, you know, catch our breath and settle down. And oh, okay. Right. <laughs> it reminds me of um, a time I was with Evelyn. We went to a Zoltan Zabo workshop together. <laughs> um, was, we had a whole week with him. It was after his, after his stroke, so he wasn't quite the same, but... Uh, I'll just tell the story really fast. So he was demonstrating doing um, some white blossoms, um, a yucca plant, and he painted it and wiped it out and painted it and wiped it out seven times over a two hour demo. Mm. And I just looked at each other like, wow. <laughs> mm. So I'm putting in this rock. I love how this rock shows up in the painting. I, when I did the Naked Ladies, this was for the show, so I needed to keep it at the beach. And there's Naked Ladies right there at your street, Laura. Yeah. I, I went tromping in those and took pictures of those, trying to get a good Naked Ladies with the beach. Mm -hmm. but, but this one at Pescadero was way better. Yeah. And also that that group of naked ladies to the side of the the south side of the road has poison oak in it. Uh oh. So I didn't really get in there too deep. No blame you. Okay, let's look how this looks now. Looks good. And we need a horizon line. I am gonna measure my horizon line because I'm gonna go from the top of my tape to whatever that distance is. Right there. Now I'm gonna draw a line. All right, there we go. So I see some negative space that I'm, oh! Ah, that's not the same spot. I just wish I hadn't put those lines in. Oh. Well, I'm gonna deal with it later. All righty. Let's see. That's here. Guys, that's good, huh? All right, let's put I'm a little bit nervous about this one. I'm scared I might put drop something on it. I was going to spray all my paintings with acrylic spray, but when I mounted them, I got some on a couple of them and, and then the glue shows up. So I'm not going to do that. There, that's protected me. Okay. So, yes. What I'm going to do is to start at the sky and then the ocean. 
go around the rocks and around the flowers up here. So that's the first step. And I'm gonna just wet the sky. I'm still liking this brush. I'm gonna use my cerulean and manganese blob. This will really fade down. You can see right away that it uh, granulates. What I mean by that, can you see the little bumps? Yeah. That, that, so these pigments are heavy. Cerulean and manganese are both very heavy and they just settle right into the paper. And you get those little bumps right off the bat. So again, we don't wanna, that's, that's enough fussing. So I, it's not solid but it's not overworked either. Now I'm gonna add Antwerp into that puddle because that ocean looks like Antwerp in French to me. I'm gonna add some French. That's good. It's very, it was very bright blue. I'm not gonna go right up to the top yet. I'm just gonna start just below the horizon line. If I touch the sky right now, it'll get a big bloom into it. So I'm going, I'm going to be painting negative. So I'm going around this rock. And the tricky part when you paint negative around something like this is that you don't just make a quarter inch thing all the way around it. If you're going to have little streaks going across like a little wave, then you kind of have to, you have to stop at the rock and then keep going. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Uh -huh. <laughs> Repeat that again. So I wanted to have a little streak, a little white streak there. Mm -hmm. When I hit the rock, I had to stop. Mm. I couldn't just go over the rock. I had to stop the little white streak at the rock. Mm -hmm. This down here, I'm painting around this part right there. Let's try to go over more. Now I've lost. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. So right here I have these rocks. I love I love how they go out and they kind of make an anvil. So that's what I'm painting around now. So this little spot right here is blue. There's a little rock right there. This is blue right here. I like that shape. I like the shape of this here. I'm not putting in the picnic tables. They're not going to make it. Now I'm going to go around all these little flowers and I'm not being particular. I'm just leaving sort of shapes that are kind of look like flowers, hopefully some points around. Just need a tiny bit more paint. Got it darker right around those flowers, so I guess I'll have to go darker in my water. So that's, that's the, the water and going around those flowers that are peeking up. I think that's a very important part is to have some of those flowers going up into the ocean. You have to paint around them. Now 
Now I'm going to fix my horizon line. I'm just going to go up to my line and straighten it out a little bit. Just leave it like that. That's a little bit different, a little interesting. Okay, great. That's the ocean around the rocks and around those top flowers. Now I'm going to work the rock. The color that I'm going to use for that rock is raw sienna mixed with my gold. And I've said this before that this summer I just loved these two combinations to start with my sand and my rocks. This rock out here in the ocean is covered in poop. That's why it's white on the top. That's kind of a yellow color to it. I don't mind that. And then these guys here And then this part's kind of, really, it's just dirt. It, out there, this time of year, it's just brown dirt. You have to go around these flowers right here. And then down to these guys. There's these little ones right here. I have to go around them. I'm just painting around them. It's all the same color. I'm going to add greens over this. So I'm trying to go around those flowers. We can always lift if it doesn't work perfectly the first time. All right, there we go. That's that layer. Now I'm going to use burnt sienna. Burnt sienna and French ultramarine blue makes a very dark brown. So now what I'm going to do is put this at the bottom of this rock out there. I don't want this to be the most detailed thing in the painting. I want the most details up here in the foreground. But what I want to do is just suggest that this is out there in the ocean and uh, there's rocks out there. I think I'm gonna try and just go a little darker. So I added more French, and now I have a darker sepia, homemade sepia for the summer. And then here's the bottom of that. And now I'm just going to add, I'm just going to dirty up that yellow. I think what I'm going to do next is paint in the pink flowers. So the first layer, and I'm just, I'm just going to use good old permanent rose. Right out of the Puddle, straight out of the palette. With some water, touch my brush. And this, I'm only just going to put one layer. I'm not trying to get all the shadows right now. This is going to be the first layer. And then I'm going to go over and I'm going to darken the shadows. So I'm just going to paint it all the little parts that are pink, pink right now. A few of those have to be up in the in the water, out out above in the water, and then 
these guys. I'm not going to put the stems in yet, just the pink part. Are you leaving me? Yeah. What? Is everybody good? We're all good. Okay. You have a question, just ask. I don't, I don't know. I don't even really care if I get the right shape exactly. It's just, I'm just sort of filling it in pink. No doggy today, Dee? Um, yeah, both of them are here on my, under my feet. Now I'm doing the big flowers, just all pink and Trying to figure out where I am and what's the flower and what's the negative space. <laughs> hmm. I don't want to just go like this and see if I can figure it out. I don't know, I can't even tell. Having traced it and having this right in front of it, I can't even tell. So what I'm gonna do is just pretend that I know what I'm doing. And I'm just gonna block in some pinks here. So I'm going um, slightly abstract. One of the things that uh, happened to me this summer painting these pictures for the 50-50 was that I got kind of tight. I was really making things look, just you know, really trying to make them look like they look. I kind of got that style going. And I'm really not sure that that's my true style. I'm more of a slightly abstract painter. Like I feel really comfortable just painting shapes right now of this, being more of a rim walker. So that's, that's all the pinks. Now what I'm gonna do is go in with these dark greens in between the pinks, and then I'm also, you know what? Nope, I'm not, I'm gonna put in stems. The stems of these naked ladies are, what color? Brownish red, purplish red? Purpley. Purplish, okay, so purplish is permanent rose and French ultramarine blue. That's purple. But I think there's some burnt sienna in there too. Let's do burnt sienna and French ultramarine blue and get that sepia color with more burnt sienna. And add the purpley pink to it. There we go. What does this one do? Well, you know what? I'm going. <laughs> All right. I 
have that line there. Okay, these guys. So a few crisscrosses. This guy here comes up this way and comes down. And then these guys have skinny little stems. <laughs> I just made those all the same color. What I'm going to do is put a little bit more pink at the top. Whoa, not that much. Boy, that pink is. And I'm going to put French ultramarine blue at the bottom. So it's like, kind of like some of them are going into shadow. Especially these guys in this corner. So that's the bunch of stems, which is really such a striking part of these flowers. Now I'm going to go in with some greens and put in between all this, you know, fill all this part in. All the white paper now is my last part of this, or my next part of this. So the green that I'm gonna make is Antwerp and Burnt Sienna. It's a dark green. Some, sometimes you'll be, you'll find these naked ladies and the grass is bright green, especially in yards where they water. You'll have some bright green grass. But it was not bright green out there that day. So I have this kind of icky couple of colors. I have, this is only Antwerp blue and burnt sienna. But this part of the puddle where I'm pointing has more Antwerp. And this part of the puddle where I'm pointing now has more burnt sienna. So I'm going to use both those. And I want to just kind of start filling in around these guys. Now I'm just going to paint these, this dark, dark green around the flower. So I'm painting negative space. Gotta remember to breathe. It's all kind of messy right in here. And I left more room because I moved those flowers over. Going over around those. This is a great place to sign my name. If I have this color green on that side of the stem, I need to have that same color green on the other side of the stem and the other side of the stem too. Now that I've got that color established, I'm gonna sign my name right here with my bamboo signer. I sign my name in cursive. Okay, S. S is my maiden name. Job is Sharani. Yeah, 
and I'm just going to keep going and go around all these. Sometimes it's easier to use PBO, but I love painting like this too. I like both ways. I think these flowers sort of um, ask to be painted negative because the shapes are so unusual. I just kind of want to vary this background color. I don't want it to all be the same green. You can see that it's kind of varied. Up here I have a nice couple areas, different colors. So we'll keep adding on to the background until we feel like we got it. And then the last step will be put a little more detail in the flowers. Okay, so if I have that color on that side of the stem, and it's got to be a little bit on that side of the stem. Does everybody know what I mean when I'm saying those, you have to have the same color on both sides of the stem? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you've had enough classes that Oh. I love that simple dark foreground. I'm going to put a little bit of pure burnt sienna or maybe some of this uh, goldy mixture. Yeah, there we go. A little bit of golden raw sienna mixture with some burnt sienna and just sort of Give it a little bit different colors in there, like, oh yeah, there's a lot of old dead grass in there. I have dark green on one side and light green on the other, so I gotta fix that. And then down here, there really is kind of a lot of blue. It's a very shadowy part. I like the greens and the browns in the in the foreground of this. I'm gonna add, and I like these darks in here, right here where I'm pointing is kind of light green. So I'm gonna add another layer in here of these different colors. And up above this flower. One of the things I can do is go, when I'm making these shapes around the flowers, when I'm painting in the negative, I just throw a little of that purple into this puddle of my green. What I can do, and you can see it in the photograph, is that kind of above the flowers and below the flowers, there's little spots of very dark color and that helps make the flowers pop out. On this painting, the one I, you can see here, the little spots where you can see through. There doesn't have to be a lot of it. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about eight spots where it's just a much darker right next to the flower. So if I do that, a few spots around this grouping here, it really makes that set pop out. I 
Evelyn used to call that punch. Give it a little punch, she would say. I don't know why I put some punch right there, but I did. I think we're getting pretty close. Right here needs a little punch. So we need to put a little bit of detail in the flowers and sort of, um, I think, mess up that rock out in the ocean. It looks like a big yellow blob. So I'm just going to put a little bit more um, sepia on it, fill it down a little bit. I think that looks better. My eye's not going straight to the rock now. And then the last thing I want to do is put some detail in these flowers. So what I'm going to do is just add another layer of pink over it. And some of that pink is going to have just a tiny bit of French ultramarine blue in it to kind of make a purple. I'm going to paint the shadows now, the bright spots in the shadows. So it's just going to, this is really a shadow. I want to have that even brighter pink. Ah, here we go. Okay, now we're talking. I'm not even, I, I'm just not going to worry too much about getting every flower to look exactly like a flower. I just want you to look at this and know that these are naked ladies. sure are a weird flower. Now I don't have as bright a pink in my brush as I'm going back into the middle sized flowers. And so I'm not even going to go, and I'm going to go, I didn't put any more paint in my brush and I'm putting in shadows in the very far back ones. So they're, they have less contrast than the ones in the front. And then there are stamen in these things. Really, I can see they're like a hibiscus almost. So you can do whatever you want with that information. What I did in this one here was I just put in some purple dots. I actually can see some like anthers and things. So what the heck? I'll put a few in. This this one, this one's a little different. It only really shows right here. Okay, I think that's I don't want to play with it until I think about it some more. So I think I'm done. Shall I take off the tape and see what it looks like? Yeah, sure. One of the things I want to do for you guys is mount some of your paintings on these boards because I bought an extra 50 so that I could have mount your paintings on for you. Or I also have a six inch by six inch opening in a 
10 in a 10 inch mat. So I either want you to get a mat or I'll mount them for you. you if they're mounted, they just go on the wall. That'd be nice. So I would like to do that for you. Sweet. All righty. Now I gotta find myself again here. And unpin the video. Ah, there we go. I see D. Ah. <laughs> D, you're pinned on mine. Uh oh. Okay. There we go. Who did we lose? We lost Dolores. And Elaine. Hmm. Well, okay. Did anybody paint? I painted. Let's see, D. Well, I'm still painting, but okay. Oh, yes, yeah, thank you. you're right oh, on your way, D. Working on it. Yep, just working all those colors. Yeah, and then that part that is very yellow above the flowers. Yeah, you want, you want to turn that into green. Okay. So, so it'll go from yellow to green to the flowers. Green okay. Above and below. All right, got it. Thank you. Who else? I have a partial. I have a partial. Partial is good. Can, I don't know if you can see it. Or not. Oh, I can. Oh, your negative is gorgeous. Looks good. Yeah, really good. Keep mm -hmm. just keep going. Just keep doing what you're doing. Beautiful. And then when you get all the negative background done, then you can just add those shadows in just over the top of the light pink. Yeah, I haven't done any of the yeah. on top of the pink yeah. yet. Yeah, but yeah. Okay, let's see, Getty. Oh, I didn't leave the white. Sorry. I've got all pink flowers. <clears throat> it's good. It's really good. I like how your flowers in the back are smaller and lighter. And yeah. I didn't finish the green, of course. Nope, you haven't finished the green, but you and did. I didn't leave the, I got the darks too dark, the, the flowers. I need to leave more white. You can lift. Lift. Yep, you can lift up a little bit or you can add white paint. Okay. There's ways to do it. Anybody else? Vicki, you watching? I'm watching. <laughs> Laura, watching your painting? Watching. Okay. Yes, I'll can paint. I see D's again? I, I didn't have the, I had just a thumbnail. Uh, oh, cool. Better? Oh, yeah, you got uh, layers in there okay. already. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, just working fast. <laughs> <laughs> really good. I'm going to stop our recording. Thank you, everyone, for watching on YouTube. <laughs>